let's go back to set theory and explore some relationships for set and events for probability. The complement of an event like A, which is denoted by A prime, A bar, or A C, is the set of all outcomes in S, the larger set S, or universal set S, that are not contained in event A. The union of two events, like A and B, which is denoted by A, U, B, you read it as A or B, is the set of all outcomes that are either in the first set or in the first event or in the second set, second event, or both of them. And finally, the intersection between two events like A and B, which is denoted by A intersection B, and you read it as A and B, is the event consisting of all outcomes that happens in both A and B at the same time. You can take a look at some visualizations. Suppose this is event A, and you have the larger set S. The shaded region is the complement or A prime. If you take two sets, two events, and find their union, you're going to shade everything in A, in B, and intersection. A intersection B just includes this little shaded area, which is the intersection or common elements between A and B. In this definition, we are exploring the idea of a conditional probability. A conditional probability is the probability of an event happening given that another event has already happened. The conditional probability of event B given event A is denoted by P, open parenthesis, you're going to type B, and you're going to use this vertical line, and this represents at the conditional part, and the second event A is the event that has already happened, and close up the parenthesis. The way you read it is probability of B given A. Mathematically, the probability of B given A is a fraction. On the numerator, you have the probability of the intersection between two events, and on the denominator, you have the probability of the given event. Consider the following case. The table at the left shows the result of a study in which researchers examined a child's IQ and the presence of a specific gene in that child. Find the probability that the child has a high IQ score given that the child has the gene. Given? Given condition. So let us take a look at the table. This table says, hey, high IQ with the gene present was 33. High IQ, the gene is not present, you have 19 children. People who have normal IQ, but they have the gene present, is just 39. And people with normal IQ, that the gene is not present, is a 11. So take a look. On the margins, you can see 52, 50, 72, 30, and 102. Let us explore. High IQ, 33, plus 19, 19 gives you 52. So in total, you have 52 people with high IQ. And in total, you have 39 plus 11, which is 50 people with normal IQ. On the vertical columns, gene present, for 33 people who have high IQ and 39 people who have normal IQ, in total you have 72 people that has the gene. And the gene is not present. High IQ people, you have 19 of them. Normal IQ people, you have 11 of them. So if you add these together, you get 30. The summation of 52 and 50 is 102. And the summation of 72 and 30 is also 102. So this is for the table. Now let us find the conditional probability. 
we know that there are 72 children who have the gene. So the sample space consists of these 72 children. We just focus on these 72 children. Why is that? Because our goal is to find the probability that a child has a high IQ, people who have high IQ, 52. But the thing is that it says given that the child has the gene, all right? The child has the gene, has the gene, and have high IQ is 33. So take a look. The column that you're looking at is the column that people have the gene present. So of these 33 that have a high IQ, we can calculate the conditional probability this way. The probability of B given A is 33 divided by 72. You get 45.8%. So again, guys, please note that we have high IQ in 52 people in total. For some, the gene is present. The other, they don't have that gene. So we don't care about this part. We just care about the people who have the gene present and they have high IQ. So you have 33 divided by 72. You can basically ignore this part of the table and then that's it. Thirty-three, which is the intersection of gene present and having high IQ. This is the intersection. And then divide by the total. The total is 72 given because the given condition that has that the child already has the gene. People have the gene. In total, you have 72. That's why you have 72 on the denominator. Let's take a look at another definition. Two events are called independent from each other when the occurrence of one of the events has nothing to do with the other one. Or in another word, the occurrence of one of the events doesn't affect the probability of the occurrence of the other event. Two events like A and B are independent from each other when the conditional probability of B given A is equal to probability of B, or the conditional probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A. So the occurrence of the given event or given condition has no impact on the probability of the event that you're looking for. Events that are not independent from each other, they call dependent. Let us classify events as independent or dependent. Tossing a coin and getting a head, and then rolling a six-sided die and obtaining a six. Okay, are these two dependent or independent? Well, the probability of B given A is one over six. The probability of B is one over six, all right? The occurrence of event A, which is basically tossing a coin and getting a head, doesn't change the probability of occurrence of B, which is rolling a six-sided die and obtaining a six. These two events are absolutely independent from each other. Another example for you, driving over 85 miles per hour, which is your event A, and then getting in a car accident, which is event B. Well, as you guessed, driving over 85 miles per hour increases the chance or increases the probability of getting in a car accident. So they are dependent. Another important terminology is mutually exclusive events. Two events like A and B are called mutually exclusive when A and B cannot occur at the same time. For example, you have face-to-face -face class and you are taking a data science class Monday, Wednesday, 4 to 6. You are present at that class. So 
you cannot be in a coffee shop at that time because you have class. When it comes to Venn diagram for mutually exclusive events, there is no intersection between them. If two events are not mutually exclusive, then there are some intersections between them. The Venn diagrams show the relationship between events that are mutually exclusive and events that are not mutually exclusive. Note that when events like A and B are mutually exclusive, they have no outcomes in common. So the most important part is the probability of A intersection B is always zero. Again, the first Venn diagram shows that A and B are mutually exclusive, and the second Venn diagram shows that A and B are not mutually exclusive because they have something in common. In relation to talking about new terminologies, let us introduce the addition rule for the probability of event A and B. The probability that events A or B happen, which is the probability of A union B or probability A or B is given by the probability of A or B, which is the probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B. If events A and B are mutually exclusive, we know that this probability is equal to zero. So you can simplify that into probability of A or B, which is the probability of A plus the probability of B. This simplified rule can be extended to any number of mutually exclusive events. For example, you roll a die. Find the probability of rolling a number less than three or rolling an odd number. All right. So first of all, when you roll a die, the event that includes less than three just includes one and two. When it comes to odd numbers, you have one, five, and three. But as you can see, only one lands in the intersection. So these two events are not mutually exclusive. It means that there is something in the intersection of these two events. These events are not mutually exclusive because one is an outcome of both events. So the probability of ruling a number less than three or an odd number is the probability less than three or odd, which can be written as the probability of having a number less than three plus the probability of an odd number minus the intersection between them. Very well. The probability that is less than three is two over six. You have just two numbers, less than three divided by six in total, plus the probability of odd, which is one, two, three, three odd numbers, divided by six. In total, you have six numbers minus there is only one number in the intersection, one over six. They all have the same denominator. Two plus three minus one is four over six. Or when you simplify this, you get two thirds or about 66.7%.